videos on. So we're going to go down through. We're going to do a little bit of review. I'm talking like quick. Be concise with what you say. Be firm with what you say. And then we're going to go into what we call the athlete development pyramid today. Okay, so whoever wants to jump first, you can grab a grease pen uh, right there and hop up on the board. Let's talk about our um, ecological model of how we assess. And it doesn't have to be verbatim, just your interpretation and maybe how you can use it within your arena. I can do that. Okay, perfect. Number one, we have the task. Then, animal outline. Number two, we have the athlete plus performer. And then, Okay, boom. Number one, the task. That is just like, for example, the drill. So if you're doing straight leg sprints across back and forth, that's just that. And you can change it and alter it to make it a little harder or not. So for example, straight leg sprints, you can change the distance, the amount of distance that they run. Athlete, performer. That's really just like the readiness, the mental aspect, the psychological aspect, how prepared they are, um, whether their body is in shape to perform that task or just to be a part of that game for the day. And then the environment is a lot of the stuff that you really don't have control over, so like the weather. But then there are things that you do have control over, so like you can change it from them running on grass to them running in the sand. Um, and another thing in the environment is like the people that are around, the coaches or like important people that might be there. So you might see someone at their A game if there's like NFL scouts there rather than just regular people in the stands. Um, how can I connect this to PT? So um, as a PT, I would have to understand. So it would be okay if I got like, you know, the little sheet with all the little things that they do so that I can assess where things went wrong in the athlete and how I can help them change alter their task so that they're not compromising their body even further um, and then with that I can also try to alter the environment as much as I can so create a more welcoming environment for them as they are like on the road to recovery Love it. That's awesome. Great job. Okay, who wants to go next? Who wants and or do you want me to tell you the topic first? Probably can guess the topic. Last week we talked about the evolution of where we are within high performance, how we got there, and maybe talked about some different um, directions that we're going in the future. Okay, so. Just like I asked uh, when Brianna jumped up there, how she would relate it to her field and her future of what she wants to do. Now that I know where sports performance and high performance has come from within Shelly or Isaiah, your areas, how do you exploit what you know and help yourself for the future in your area? Okay, so I know what, where we were, I know where we are, I don't really know exactly where it's going, but I kind of have an idea. How can you use that to your advantage? Go on the grease board and go. <laughs> so retaining to my field of being a personal trainer that's specializing in equipping people that are from many backgrounds, whether they're a bodybuilder, regular um, civilization, or an athlete that is in their off season that doesn't have anybody to work with. So working with the task of who exactly they are. So I'm just gonna write for number one, the task, so exactly what they want to achieve. I'm just gonna put 
put what they desired. And then going for number two, looking at exactly like where their weaknesses are. type of environment that would be placed onto um, like different standpoints of what they're used to say they're an athlete or say they're regular civilization and um, like say Rihanna doesn't like running so okay do you like swimming oh you do like swimming okay let's put you within that environment of where you're used to and then we can build up to areas that you're not comfortable with so that you can make sure that you can still get that improvement that you desire well, at the same time, you can avoid being put in uncomfortable situations because the main thing that pushes people away from being personally trained or being improved within themselves is that they're put into an area where they're not wanting to be coming back. So for the main part of the task of what they want to improve within themselves, um, how I can improve them with these goals that they have given me, but at the same time, looking at where they lack or where they feel as though they lack, whether it's the mental state or whether it's the improvement within themselves, while looking at the environment and how we can improve these things or how we can go around these things that are seen as a difficulty or a barrier with them. I like that a lot. I like that a lot, being very fluid, knowing your people, and then, okay, I like it. Very nice. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, Shelly. This one's a little bit out of context, so it'll take 30 seconds before you get up there. Okay, so last week, not in this setting, but in another conversation, we were talking about building kind of like how we may create some sort of system of learning or a curriculum. And I outlined um, four steps that make it easy to go down through a unit. And I think what we talked about was um, like an intro, a little bit of scientific background, some application or how I could apply it to a field, and then some sort of review that we review everything. Okay, so keeping in mind that now you're in the weight room, you're a strength coach, okay, um, or you're a softball coach, you're out on the field. How can you design some sort of not lecture content unit, but something on the field or in the weight room unit? to develop a skill using those four different elements. And it could be over a series of days or even a week. Okay. Hmm. I think what works best as a strength coach would be like, in order to create a plan like that, I think you do have to take into account like these three things. Um, and same thing with what Isaiah said. Um, but I think the, um, the way to do that would be to start obviously with what kind of team you have, where that is the first step obviously, is keeping the athlete first. Um, and then going along with that, like planning and seeing what would work best for them. And then evaluating after, I think it's a test, not a test trial, but I think um, starting off with something, like you would kind of have to put your ego aside as a coach and test out the waters and see what works and starting out with um kind of a simpler plan and then building off from that so the next after keeping the athlete at the center then you have the um planning and evaluation and evaluating is really just looking back at your plan and seeing what works and then after that like i said um kind of putting your ego aside just like continuing to learn from your um the past experiences and seeing um, what in those um, four things like the lesson the um, going over it and then reviewing works best and what doesn't and I think um, like building off of that in order to create the, what's best for your athletes nice so if I was creating one skill let's say I was introducing this is really um, elementary I know but like in the game let's say I was teaching them how to field a ground ball mm -hmm. how would you do that and make it maybe you start simple, but then you make it more complex. You mean like if they like literally don't know how to do it at all or yeah, just like it. going over? 
say we go over there and there's a camp going on at, at the softball stadium and uh, all of us are at a station and it's like, okay, we got 50 little ones and we're gonna teach them how to throw the ground ball. Well, I think you have to start like, depending on their age, I think you have to start kind of mechanically and water it down almost. So like if I were to say, um, you know, get in an athletic position, maybe if they were younger, I'd probably say, you know, bend your knees, get your hips a little bit lower, put your glove down and, and I'll roll the ball at you and just leave your glove there. And then after that, I think you can advance it and be like, okay, stand up tall. And then when I look like I'm ready to go, then you get down and you move through. Right, so I think starting out small and kind of building off of it each time is what you can do to kind of progress them, but not push them too far where they're like, oh, I don't know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I think the key word that I heard you say was just building. Mm -hmm. When you think about building, it's like stacking on top of pre-existing either knowledge or experience. So I love that. Good job. Okay, awesome. I want to, it's not shifting gears, but it is, um, it's not shifting gears per se, but it is, we've been spending a lot of time here talking about kind of like the environment, talking about things from a 10,000 foot view, Except, okay? So like we're looking at the athlete, we're looking at, you know, where we're teaching them, things like that. Now I want to think about development. Okay, now what are we teaching? Okay, so, and, and this is somewhat agnostic of sport, of area. So this is not me as Nelly strength coach, this is not me as Nelly baseball guy. It's like just total athlete development. Okay, so for some context. So I wanna introduce what we call the athlete pyramid, athlete development pyramid. This is not my original idea. This is not our departmental ideas. This was pulled from a lot of different people. Fergus Connolly's work, a lot of the things within like skill acquisition, um, health and wellness. Um, there's a lot of cool people out there that, that put things on social media as it pertains to this and we stole all that and just lumped it into a pyramid. We're also in the process of updating it a little bit with some of our other members of sports performance. But here's generally how it goes. So I have dude or dudette, okay? And we know that there's a lot of different areas that we need to develop them. You know, it's really simple too, when we think back to the last lesson with all those subdisciplinary areas, for me to just be ultra focused on what I'm responsible for. But the problem there is I may not be thinking about what the other units are doing. Okay, so when we think about this, we wanna think about it as the total athlete. Everything matters. So as a college kid, the um, classes matter, the social matters, the, the uh, experience that they have before they get to college matter, the physical matters, the on-field stuff matters. Everything should be accounted for. So because of that, we go and follow a pyramid. So the general structure of a pyramid, okay, is the base is wide and so when I think about the pyramids, um, a, a true physical pyramid, the bottom is thick. And the thicker and the wider, the more I can get height, okay? So the very bottom of our pyramid is gonna be our most foundational component, and we're gonna call this the health and wellness block. Okay, this is what we're gonna start off with every single time we have a conversation with a kid his or her family, um, anything. This is the lens we're first starting because in this area, we're talking about habits. Um, things like b behaviors like sleep, hygiene, basic wellness areas. And there's seven areas of wellness. And I'd be lying if I could say I could recite them right away. Um, so I'm not even going to try, but it, it comprises of everything from just um, being clean, being healthy, being happy, um, feeling confident, maybe, 
um, even just feeling free of pressure, you know, um, just, just feeling comfortable, okay? We attack this just like we do uh, um, in here sometimes, just by having quick conversations, throwing things out there, you know, asking people how they're doing, talking about sleep, understanding that this is the foundation of, of everything up higher, okay? This is step one. In some other things that we'll put out and we'll talk about later, we also identify this as um, the person. So we want to first start with the person. If we can start with the person, we can then move on to what will go in the second step as the engine. Okay, so all of our athletes have characteristics that we can train. That goes in this block as well. Okay, there are four elements to this engine block. The first one is the physical. Okay, the physical, think weight room, think physical maturation over time. Nutrition could also go in here. Sleep can certainly go in here too, but it's kind of interconnected. But physical development, just think about size, stature, strength, power. The elements of this, and there's several, is just like general physical fitness, strength, power, speed. Those go in this block. The next one is our technical block. Technical aspects of athlete development have to do with the skills associated with that sport or a position. Okay, so um, think about dance, for example. The technical aspects of that are your actual skills of your moves. Okay, if I'm thinking basketball, it may be dribbling, shooting, the skills associated with individual positions and sports. Okay, the tactical. Your next block. Tactical is essentially scheme or X's and O's. What am I trying to do schematically as a team or as a unit? So think about a field sport like soccer. What are the spacing that we're trying to create? What are the leverage angles? What are we trying to do in terms of numbers? Are we outnumbering um, an opponent? Okay. Some sports exist on different levels of the spectrum where some sports may be heavily skill-oriented with minimal tactics. Some may be heavy tactics, minimal skill, but they all have a little bit of this. The next one is mental. Okay. And again, every sport's different. Every position has different amounts of these. And then the last section here, and we'll call it three, is the professional. And I don't mean like, hey, NFL player, Major League Baseball player, professional um, athlete. I just mean like someone that can do things consistently over time. That's what we're thinking about as a professional, and this is called high performance. If you look at the definition of what performance means, it's essentially kind of like the execution of a task, completion of something. When you attach high performance, essentially consistently achieving high elite levels of whatever execution or task that may be. So, general intro to this. This is what we have kind of chosen within the department right now, Applied Health and Performance Science, to be our model because it's a foundation for plugging everything in. You know, you think about Applied Health. What is that? Oh, it's this block right here. It's some of these blocks. You think about performance science, how do we measure certain things? We're running GPS, we're looking at speed, we're looking at workload. You know, if we're looking at specific tactics on the field and we're measuring how many, what, what a, an athlete's batting average is, what their fielding percentage is right versus left, we're looking at these areas. Looking at evaluating a, a, a kid as it, as it pertains to how he or she clears um, maybe a bad outing, a bad game, a bad performance that falls in this area. So this is a really foundational model, not, not just for sports science, but just for performance in, in general. So any questions with this? Quick, quick overview there. Um, we do have some other videos of this on social media, on YouTube, um, that if you want to dig into it a little bit more, this would be neat. 
but look up Fergus Connolly. He has a really neat model. Um, his is a little bit more vertical, but uh, he has a really neat model. You want to um, introduce the outside triangle or pyramid? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. We're going to, though. Yep.